I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe He gave His life upon the cross. I believe He laid Him in the grave, but on the third day He raised. I believe that Jesus Christ. Savior was just a man. Yeah. Others don't believe that his blood rained down his side for me when he hung out on a tree. But when I think about the time my life was upside down. Good morning, members and guests, to the Pearland West Church of Christ Cyber Sanctuary, where our spirits unite to worship God, our Creator and Father. Let us center ourselves now as we open our service with prayer. Almighty God, it brings us joy to worship you and praise you for who you are and for how you shower your love upon us. In these challenging times, we seek the peace that can only be found at the foot of your throne and the encouragement that comes only from your Holy Spirit. Just as you are Lord of an enormous universe, you too are Lord over the invisible world of microbes, bacteria, and viruses. So God, we put our trust in you to be our deliverer, protector, and great physician as we have need. Receive, O oh Lord, the sweet incense of our spiritual songs, the humble memorial of our communion, and the earnest longing in our groanings and petitions. These moments of worship we offer to you as your humble servants and your loving children. In the name of him who interceded for us on the cross, we pray. Amen. Soldier on the battlefield, I'm a hard fighting soldier, and I'm on the battlefield. Lord, you know I'm a hard fighting soldier, and I'm on the battlefield. I'll keep on bringing souls to Jesus by the service that I give. I got my head. In my hand, my sword and shield. Oh, I got my helmet on my head. And in my hand, my sword and shield. Don't you know that my helmet's on my head? And in my hand, my sword and shield. I'll keep right on bringing souls to Jesus by the service that I now I've got to walk right, talk right, sing right, and pray right. I'm on the battlefield. Oh, I've got to walk right and talk right, sing right, and pray right. I'm on the battlefield. Lord, you know, yes, I will walk right, talk right, and sing right, and pray right. I'm on the battlefield. I'll keep on. Oh 
Come to another portion of our service, which is the communion, where we remember the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We find scriptural example in Acts chapter 20 and verse number 7, and upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech unto midnight. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and beginning at verse number 23 says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Verse 26 says, For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Would all those that would like to participate in the communion, please stand at this time. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse number 24 says, And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let us pray for the bread at this time. Most holy and all wise Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for your sacrifice and thank you for loving us before the foundation of the world and loving so much you gave up the most precious thing that you had in your Son that we might be reconciled unto you because of our sin. We thank you for the opportunity to remember this, the Lord's death, and we pray that we take the Bread that represents your son's broken body with a clean hands and a pure heart. And forgive us of all of our sins and trespasses by word, thought, or deed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may take the bread at this time. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse number 25 says, After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray for the cup is at this time. Again, Lord, we come to you thanking you for loving us so much and loving us more than we love ourselves sometimes. We pray that we take the cup that represents your son's shedding blood on the cross for our sins, because without the shedding of blood, there could be no forgiveness and remission of sins. We pray we take this cup that represents your son's shed blood with a clean hands and a pure heart. These and other blessings, that's in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, church. We want to instruct you on how you can give your tithes and offerings online. You simply go to the official Pearland West Church of Christ homepage at pearlandwestcoc.org. In the upper left at the top of the page, you will see online giving. You simply click that link. It takes you to our online giving page. Under choose a fund, click general giving. 
the amount you would like to contribute, and the option to include a memo and the frequency of how you would like to contribute is also there. You then click no thanks and click on the contribute button. This takes you to the PayPal page where you enter an email or mobile number. You also have the option to contribute via a debit card or credit card, after which you click next and your contribution is entered. You will also notice a QR code on the middle or in the right corner of the screen right now. You can use a camera of your smartphone to capture that QR code and it will take you directly to the online giving page where you can follow the exact same instructions that I just gave. Thank you, church family, and God bless. We now come to a part of our service, which is contribution. We find recorded in 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, starting at verse 6, and it reads, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according to purpose in his heart. So let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Let us pray for the contribution. Kind Master, we come to you giving you all thanks, honor, glory, and praise. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity to give back that of which you have given us a small portion. Father, we pray for the Pearland West uh, congregation that we use it in a timely and fashionable way for the upbuilding of your kingdom. This is our prayer in your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us all say, Amen. Lord, thank you, Lord. We say thank you, Lord. Say thank you. Say thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank. I want to thank you, Lord. And I just want to. I want to thank you, Lord, because you've been so good and you've been so, you've been so good. Lord, you've been so good. Lord, you've been so good. you've been so good. Thank you, Lord, because you saved my soul. You saved my, saved my soul. Lord, you saved my soul. Lord, you saved. Lord, you saved my soul. I want to thank you, Lord, and you made me, oh, you made me, you made me, oh, Lord, you made me, oh, Lord, you made me, Lord, you made me, oh, I want to thank you, Lord. We say thank you, Lord. Say thank you. Say thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. I want to thank you, Lord. Oh, did majesty, 
and all the earth rejoice, and all the earth rejoice. Here have himself been light, and darkness tries to hide. It trembles at his voice, it trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Come on, sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Oh, oh, oh how great is our God. Come on, sing with me. How great, how great is our God. Be 
He's mighty. He's mighty. And he is awesome. Oh, Welcome again to the Fairland West Church of Christ morning worship service. We're thrilled to have you joining us on, on this Sunday, and we pray that you have been uh, equally as excited as I have been about coming back and continuing our rich study in the book of James. I constantly thank those who make contributions to our being able to have the services that we have week after week uh, via the technology, but I have to continue to do that, and I have to say it again because I'm forever impressed with the enhanced quality of the programming that we have with our program here at the Paraland West Church of Christ. And so again, I just have to thank Brother Fountain and Brother Rivers for what they do. They work hard in order to produce a quality product, one that the Paraland West congregation at first can be proud of because it goes out to others, but also a product that makes it user-friendly for you to be able to sit there as a part of the Paraland West congregation and to receive the experience, the Paraland West experience being communicated and transferred to you via technology. We have a virtual collectivity that is right here. Right now we're experiencing a spiritual collective consciousness because at this very moment, right here, right now, all of us understand that the entire body of the Paraland West Church of Christ every single member of the body of Christ. We are all spiritually connected. We are worshiping God in spirit and in truth. We're receiving the same word and going through the same motions at the same time. I don't know about you, but that is an exciting reality to me, to know that my brothers and my sisters, that we have communion right here, right now, because the church is a spiritual entity and we are all connected in Christ. Glad that you're here. We've been looking at the book of James, and I want you to come back with me now. Let's go back to the book of James, and let's 
see if we can wrap this up. First of all, for those who have not been with us the entire time, I'm not going to have time to share with you everything we've talked about in the previous messages. But I will let you know that we started off looking at James chapter 1 and verse number 1 through 4, where it says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. He goes on to say to the 12 tribes scattered among the nations, greetings. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you find face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And that's a, that is a very rich text. And I started out with you a couple of weeks ago pointing out the unique qualities, not so much of the book itself, but also of the author. We understand that the book is one that correlates with the Old Testament wisdom literature books. And James correlates and corresponds with them beautifully. James is a book that does not seek to explore out the essential principles of the gospel, but rather to show you what it looks like to actually live out the principles of the gospel. And I started out letting you know, so I don't want to deal a lot of time with the book, but I do want you to understand a little bit about the author. We looked at James's life, figuring out who is this James. And we came to the conclusion that the James who wrote the book of James is James, the brother of Jesus Christ himself. And we looked at his ethnicity and how that would present a challenge for him to declare Jesus as God. That is a difficult thing to even imagine a Jew being able to do. But a Jew who grew up with Jesus, then to turn around and recognize him as Lord, we looked at the challenges associated with that. But we understood that Jesus was, according to the message of the prodigal son, a better elder brother than the parable depicts in Luke chapter 15. This is an elder brother who through grace says, I'm willing to share everything that I have. Then we looked at his death and how that even through his death, he never gave up his faith in his brother being the Lord Jesus Christ, the Kyrios, the Lord, the one who has God in him. And so we looked at that and that he died a martyr's death, but that's the caliber of a man that turned around and wrote these words, consider it pure joy. When you understand that about his history, it makes all the difference in the world. Then we shared with you on last Lord's Week that once we understand these qualities and characteristics about the man who actually wrote the book, that then we're able to understand certain principles. The first principle we looked at is the fact that trouble is inevitable. When you look at the text, the text makes it clear trouble is inevitable. There's absolutely no way to get through this life without having to endure some of the troubles. And we share with you that anything that can happen to anybody can happen to you. Don't ever believe that just because you are a Christian that somehow you're able to escape and evade the troubles and the vicissitudes that are associated with living in this world. Anything that can happen to anybody can happen to you. And so I pointed out we wanted to take a balanced approach to looking at suffering. And by looking at that, I said, look at the word consider. It says here in verse number two, consider it pure joy. That means you've got to think. We've got to be a thinking people. We cannot just be an emotional people. We have to be a thinking people. He says, consider it pure joy. Think carefully. And you need to consider. And we looked at the first, very first word in verse number two, and you have the word consider. Then in verse number three, the very first word you have is because. He's saying, I want you to consider because. Consider because. There are actually some things, some qualities that we can enjoy that come as a result of going through whatever it is we're going through in life. Actually, there are some qualities and some properties that the only way you can enjoy is to go through the suffering in life. And I venture to say that there are some things that I don't know, I can tell you at least four things I shared with you 
that I don't know how you would ever be able to get these, how you would ever be able to acquire these without suffering. We looked at two of them on last Lord's Day. We looked at humility, that without some suffering, I don't know how you would find humility. A rich understanding and appreciating appreciation rather of freedom, what it means to be free. I don't think without suffering, without losing something that you think that you absolutely have to have, because you don't suffer when you lose something you think you don't need, but when you lose something that you think that you have to have and yet you still live, then you've been set free of that. It no longer has you around the throat. I don't know any other way for you to acquire that appreciation without some suffering. And then the third one is compassion. Compassion. How many of you know that because of some real trouble in your life, some real problems, some real burdens, because of those troubles, you understand other people. I remember, and I've shared this on many occasions, I'm going to share it with you again. I remember when my father passed and uh, he was a rough man, a tough man, but that doesn't change the fact that I loved my father. I love my father. When I was in my 20s, my father died. Now, I started preaching full time when I was about 21 or 22, as soon as I graduated uh, from Oklahoma Christian University, I immediately went out and began to preach full time. And when I was in my early 20s, I would go to funerals, I'd have to conduct funerals, I would uh, work with funerals, I'd work with the families. And I remember looking at them when they were going through their grief and their sorrow, and I would say to them, I understand how you feel. I understand how you feel. It was so perfunctory and it would just roll right off of my tongue without giving any thought to it. If I went to a funeral and I said, oh, I, I am so sorry. I, I understand how you feel. I understand how you feel. Then in my late 20s, probably 26, 27, my father died. I had never experienced anything like that. And then I was reminded recently again of that caliber of loss. Uh, this past November when Dr. Jack Evans, the former president of Southwestern Christian College passed, that death hit me with the tongue of, of bricks just like the death of my father hit me. I lost a father and I lost a friend. Well, it is only because of going through that even now when I think about the coronavirus and we look at the numbers of over 600,000 people in America who are infected. And then you look at the fact that we're coming close to almost 30,000 people who have died. That makes my heart heavy to know that those people across this nation of ours are carrying that burden, that, that, that burden of loss that I'm also familiar with. I don't think that I would be able to have this capacity to identify with the people who are hurting and who are struggling had I not experienced the real great losses in my own life. You never would have cared about some people had you not experienced some troubles in your life. You never would have been able to relate to them until you've had some troubles in your life. Compassion, the capacity to empathize. I don't believe that you can have that kind of compassion unless you go through some suffering. The fourth one, lastly, faith. When suffering comes, this is always God coming to you and saying to you, okay, are you ready to run? Are you ready to bolt? Are you ready to throw your hands up and, and walk away? Or are you ready to turn on me? When trouble comes, that's God testing you. God is asking you, are you ready to put me down? Are you ready to go? Uh, do you know what is being revealed to me? God is asking you these questions. Now the stuff, the suffering he's letting you know is showing us something. We get to the real point. Did you get into Christianity in order 
for God to serve you. That's basically what God is saying to you. God is looking at you when trouble comes. God is actually saying to you, did you get into Christianity to get me to serve you? Or did you get into Christianity for you to serve me? Which one is it? It can't be both. It has to be one or the other. Even you got into Christianity. If God is saying this, God is saying, did you get into Christianity for me to serve you? Or did you get into Christianity in order to serve me? Which one did you choose to do? If you say, well, God, if you don't answer my prayers, then how many times have I seen people say it? They didn't verbalize it, but they said it with their unfaithfulness. They're saying, well, God, if you don't, under if you don't answer my prayer, if you don't come through with me th for me this time, if you don't give me what it is that I want, then I'm out of this faith stuff. In other words, you're saying, God... God is the employee. You're saying that you're the boss and God is the employee. So if I were God, I'd be saying to you, so I'm the employee and you're the boss. You are about to fire me, God. You are threatening me. Keep in mind, I'm speaking for God. This is the dynamic that is being created when trouble comes and you are having to contend with nurturing your faith in the midst of troubles. God is saying to you, you said, if I have problems and God, if you don't come through, I'm done with this faith stuff. So God is saying to you, are you threatening me? You are threatening me? You say, you're telling me that your agenda is non-negotiable, basically. I am negotiable, however. I am the means, you are the end. Now we see that you really don't have faith in me. That's what God is saying to you. Now we see that you never really had faith in me in the first place. You have faith in your agenda. And what you're trying to do really is you're using me. We don't want to send that message to God. It's only when suffering comes. It's only when trouble comes. It is only when difficulty, difficulty comes that you realize these issues, this battle that you're having with yourself. So there is no way to humility. There is no way to real, genuine compassion. There is no way to freedom. And there is no way to faith, at least this kind of humility, at least this kind of compassion, at least this this kind of freedom, at least this kind of faith, there is no way to it without suffering. There is no way for you to be complete. Count it pure joy when you realize what can happen in your life. But you know what? That's not enough. That's not always enough. Because I want you to know that sometimes suffering comes and it comes in so bad, you can't just sit there and say, oh, joy, oh, joy, I'm going to be so mature. Oh, joy, oh, joy, I'm going to be such a complete person. This would be so wonderful in the end. You know, I don't think sometimes that that's going to be enough. I will tell you what you have to consider. Count it pure joy that you can persevere. Now, I need you to listen to this. Count it pure joy that you can persevere. You don't just handle suffering by thinking about what God can do in your life. That's one part of it. You think about what God can do in your life and you do pursue those richer, deeper qualities, but that's only one part of it. You handle suffering because you say, I want to persevere. I want perseverance. Now, this is a very important word when we talk about perseverance. It's a word that's also translated in scripture, endurance. The same Greek word that is translated perseverance is sometimes translated endurance. It's the Greek word hypomeno, hypomeno, H-Y-P-O-M-E-N-O, -E hypomeno. Hyper means super. Hyper means intense. Meno means stand. Now, what is endurance? When we talk about hypomeno, 
hyper intense meno stand what is endurance it means to stand your ground it means hyper stand if if you took the time to look at that you'll see exactly what James is saying to you, what James is trying to get you to develop. You'll see what James says that you're out to accomplish in your life. You want the ability to persevere. You want perseverance, hypomeno. You want to be able to hypostand. You want to be able to stand there. This is what you're out to develop. When suffering comes, you consider hyperstand. Listen to that carefully. When trouble comes, you consider hypomeno, hyperstand. Do you know what that means? Were you praying before trouble came? Were you worshiping before trouble came? Were you obedient before trouble came? Were you reading your Bible before trouble came? Well, keep on doing it. Just stand your ground. If you don't, if you retreat, you'll become bitter and you will become an anxious person. But if you simply stay put, stand your ground, stay put, keep on praying, it will be harder, but keep on. Keep on loving your neighbor. Even if you're going through it, hyper stand. Stand your ground. It will be harder, but you continue to love your neighbor. Keep caring about other people. It will be harder, but hyper stand. Stand your ground. The suffering will turn you into this furnished, complete person. But beyond that, the word consider means, think about the one who persevered for you. Think about the one who endured for you. We just finished the study in Hebrews chapter 12, but let's look real fast and let's wrap this up with Hebrews chapter 12. The same word is found here. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse number two, it says, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right throne, hand of the throne of God. Now look at the next verse. Consider him. There's that word again. Consider. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Hebrews chapter 12 and verses two and three. Consider him who endured so much from others. Fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured. He stood his ground. He hypostand the cross that, and he despised the shame. When you look at that word endured, endured is the same word hyperstand. Hyperstand, stand your ground. You know, there's nothing more moving to me personally than any story that I see where somebody decided to stay put in a deathly situation in order to save others. One example of that, there's one movie that my wife and I used to watch years ago, and every now and then it'll, it'll show up and, or I'll stumble upon it, and, and I get emotionally engaged every time I, I watch this movie. And it's a movie uh, named Armageddon. In that movie, Armageddon, I'm always moved. Bruce Willis promised his daughter before he goes into space with men on a journey to destroy a media that's coming on a collision course with the earth. Bruce Willis looks at his daughter and he promises her, I'll be back. Don't worry, I'm coming back home. He goes on to space, traveling with her fiance. He goes on this journey and her fiance is on the same team with Bruce Willis as they go 
on this journey to destroy this meteor that's coming in a collision course with the earth. Circumstances had it where ultimately at the end, somebody had to stay behind in order to ignite the explosives to destroy the meteor heading straight to the earth. They were trying to do it remotely, but it would not work. So somebody had to stay behind. They decided to draw straws. Bruce Willis's son-in-law-to-be drew the short straw. So it was up to him to stay behind. Well, Bruce Willis thought about his daughter back at home waiting on her fiance to come back. And he, he looked at the bigger picture and Bruce Willis tricked the boyfriend on boarding the aircraft, the spacecraft. And they had a limited amount of time in order to take off and get away and be out of the sear of the blast, the blast of the explosion that was going to have to occur. And so they took off and they were forced to lift off and leave Bruce Willis behind. He stayed there. He endured. He understood if others are going to escape, he understood if my daughter is going to escape this fate, if the entire earth is going to escape this fate of destruction, I am going to have to stay there. I'm going to have to stand here. I'm going to have to stay behind and stand my ground. He stayed there. He hyper stood. He said, for the love of my daughter, for the love of the people of the earth, I'm going to stand. I'm going to endure. And so he stands there. Everybody gets away. The spacecraft gets outside the range of the blast. They get away. Of course, he destroys the meteor along with himself. Why? He was hyper standing. He was saying, my love for my daughter, my love for the people of the earth, I'm seeking to save them. I will endure anything. It will take anything to save my daughter and the earth. Well, the reason Jesus Christ stood and took on hell itself, the reason Jesus Christ endured the wrath of God himself is because he loved us. God poured out all of his wrath on Jesus Christ. Jesus did not let go. Jesus stood. Jesus hyper stood there. He endured. He stood his ground steadfastly he stood there that's what steadfast love looks like so now jesus turns around and he looks to us he looks to us and he says i want you to look what i've endured for you it says here in hebrews 12 and 2 let us fix our eyes on jesus the author and the perfecter of our faith who for the joy set before him endured the cross he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. It says that what we've got to learn to do is consider him. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men. The question is, are you willing to do that? Are you willing to stand your ground for him? He's saying that my preservation, or my perseverance rather, is the jewel of your life. I did that for you. You look at how I loved you no matter what. You keep your eyes on what I endured for you no matter what. That is the reason you know today that there is no condemnation for you. Do you know how you know that Jesus loves you? Do you know how that you know Jesus cares for you and will always love you because you know he hyper stood. He stood his ground against all hell that was cast upon him. God dropped a bomb on him. God dropped a bomb on Jesus and now you know there's nothing that you can do to get rid of Jesus. Jesus endured a bomb being dropped on him. He did it for you because of the love that he has for you, and he's still here. If Jesus' love was so great that he was able to hyperstand, he was able to stand his ground against that for you, 
Do you think that your little sins are going to scare him away or wear him out? Jesus is here for us. Jesus loves us. Jesus says, though my suffering, I persevered. Through my suffering, I stayed with you. Now, my perseverance is the joy of your life. Now, I want you to endure for me. You are not married and you want to be. You are not promoted on your job and you want to be. You don't have any friends and you want friends. Maybe you're sick and you can't seem to get well. Maybe you're at the point where you're even facing death. Hyperstand. Stand your ground, Jesus says, for me. Keep your faith intact. Don't just say, I can persevere because it'll make me a better person. No, you say, I can persevere because Jesus persevered for me. Jesus stood here for me. Jesus took it all for me. And if you consider that, if you consider and let your mind be on that, you will stay put. You'll become very, very, very great in heart and you'll make a difference in the lives of everyone around you. You just hold on and eventually you will see the enormity of what he did and the bliss that comes into our lives because we have held on for him just as he held on for us. Hyperstand, you stand your ground. The writer of James says, in essence, I want you to consider this. Keep your mind on this. Think about this. Get your mind straight. You consider, you consider the trials because you know that there are blessings that are going to come from it. But even beyond that, you understand that Jesus persevered for you. And because of that, we experience the blessings and the joy we have of salvation. We can enjoy that right here, right now. Thank you for being with us. We look forward to talking with you again on next Lord's Day. Heavenly Father, though we have been separated this morning by miles instead of a few feet, it was good to be brought close together by the spirit of worship and the purpose of adoring you in your majesty. We thank you for being present among us all as we sat in separate dwellings. And we thank you for the edifying words that you put in your servant's mouth to impart to us. Now, be our strong tower as we face the challenges of everyday life in all its sham and glory. And know that our every breath is for you, Lord. Receive this petition in the name of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.